So um, not going to bore you with the pro forma. We have it. Uh, so on the top right, top left, it's the rent growth and vacancy. When we get into operation, and uh, some of the fundamental principles that we have is one of them is we do not die by lower rent. The asset will die with no rent. So no matter what, have a paying tenant inside the building. It doesn't matter how low of a rent to get. So I'll give an example. Uh, for a 200 some odd units, uh, roughly 200 units on a class C, if you do in the Texas area, your, your break-even cost, that means to pay for the empty air, to pay for the overheads and the taxes and insurance is roughly 400 bucks. That means if I have 20 units sitting out there times 400, that much money is coming out of our cash that we're not getting paid for. So it is okay to have $401, still have somebody pay for it. Sometimes we get, you know, non-quantitative thing kind of get you. Why am I going to pay so, so much of a rent? But guess what? No matter what, I'm paying $400 per unit anyways. So why don't I have someone at least pay me a dollar more? I'm not paying for it. So when we price in our rent, we have that in mind. So we know our marketing budget, our cost of acquisition, right? So all in all, this is what we had. At the bottom, what I'm going to show you is that our cost, our NOI, it's about a million dollar that seller had it. We slightly bumped it to $2 million. That's mostly because on the insurance side right here, if we take a look at it, seller was paying 161, then uh, State Farm came and gave us $100,000 for the same thing. We pocketed the $60,000 that went back to the NOI. But next year, we brought it back up. We thought it was a fluke. It's a gift. So fine. We'll plug in as a thank you. But next year, we assume the gift's going to go away. If it stays, it's a gift. But if it goes away, it's fine. We're not going to get caught with the $60,000 increase. So we're going to price that way. And real estate taxes, we increased $100,000 off the bat. It's going to be lower than that. So this too are the killers in the Texas area because there is nothing you and I can do to change those two. It's set by the market. So when you make assumption, you wanna be on that side. As long as they make money, or we'll make money. If they don't make money, they're gonna take everything else because 50% of our cost is this, wherever you go in, right? So around 50%, but you know, so it's there. So that's what we did. And the rent perspective way on the top, we went up on the $67. That's also because it's all bills paid. So if you separate out bills paid versus all bills paid, it's not a whole lot, mostly the other income that you went. So we looked at it, uh, all the other units, all the other properties are no bills paid, ours is all bills paid. So we had some arbitrage and we went for that one. So overall, the first line, 11% increase uh, for, for 24 months, then it's a flat for the equity. So not a not much of a push as we, as we did that. So. Going back, what I was mentioning, the project must have breathing room. And that's the breathing room we had. And also you can see at the very advertising right here, uh, $7,500 to $20,000. So we wanted to, we knew we we're going to have a lot of refraps. We're going to go back in. We got to clean up the house. And once you clean up the house, I got to come back out. And when we come back out, we have to do a lot of marketing, put the budgets, put the budgets as you go. And also vacancy, we assumed about 12% for year one. That's, that gives us a, a year one and two, sorry. That gives us a breathing room. Then we stabilize at a 9%. We did not go in at a 9% coming in. So, so that's there. Now, uh, oh, and the exit uh, on the top left, it's NOI target 1.6 million or when we get close to it, that's there. On the right side, number three, it's really important for us. We do have sensitivity. So we hold NOI constant, go up and down on the cap rate to see what the strike looks like. And then we hold cap rate constant, go up and down on the NOI to see what looks like. So we look at worst versus worst, best versus best. Then we ask, how do we strike in somewhere close to the worst so it's still with money? In this case, 24 to $25 million right here, six and a half. So in other way, if the project goes bad uh, and we lose a little bit on the NOI, we're still fine. Uh, so it has some breathing room as you kind of go through. So three and a one, they go hand in hand for us as you take a look at it. And those two get set by the market exit cap rate that we have. Okay, so uh, this is something value add. We thought it through before we buy that, you know, we try to think it through what interior update we're going to do, what exterior update we're going to do. And then we try to take those and tie it to the revenue, tie it to the cost. And then we kind of go from there. So on the exterior value add, that's defined. What massive side, 
we have a process what we call it if I have less money compared to the work is needed. So we rather burn out the money by doing exterior first, then interior, then infrastructure. Because once you fix a roof, once you fix a you know, pipeline that is broken, it doesn't increase the you know, rent, it optimizes the cost. Versus I put a fence on the, on the property that creates a better filling, I can have a better paying tenant. We, that's one. And number two, even though the infrastructure doesn't give any return, we are very tactical about it. We'll bake it in, uh, in a process, uh, two or three pipe failures, some roof repairs. So we make sure we keep up the property at a very good way when people feel good about it, right? All right, so testing time. Okay, so those are the assumptions that we made. Uh, we said we're gonna do a lot of work and it was a lot of work. And then we brought in UAG and we brought in the GP team. We have us, some massive seats on it. We have our own property management software and David Foran, he's our asset manager. Behind him, we have Baskar, he's our asset analyst. Between them two, they're running you know, data every week and advising our partner um, to run the asset. Within the partner, there was two uh, roles. One is the asset manager, one is the CapEx manager. So just like everybody else, when we talk about from the you know, massive masters, a lot of folks wanna come in and do the GP. And resume perspective, knowledge perspective, willingness perspective, you you are going to check all of them out. But the time perspective, you may fall short. That's the issue. So so we have to think it through and that's why we come in, we build the team together that way. Uh, so everything starts with the time, willingness to do it, then available time to execute on it, and then you go. So, and a very um, nice, a very simple way to do a testing will be, if you wanna be an asset manager, what if something happens on a Monday at 10 o'clock? Can you be at the property? Just simple things, right? How we get there, we don't know. Let's say something happened on a Monday at 10 o'clock. You have to be there physically. And you have to be there twice, in, I mean, two weeks in a row. If you can be there, then you have your life structure is designed to be an asset manager. Otherwise, uh, asset management, secondary, maybe tertiary, not the primary role, right? So that's that's what it is. But let's let's walk you guys through. All right, what we have done. So CapEx exterior, uh, we said we're gonna do something bold and that's gonna make a statement. So first thing we went in, we fixed the pool. Uh, because we have seen a lot of kids there, they have about 20% of the folks there from Afghanistan after the US army pullout, they moved here, they have a lot of kids. They, they really like the property. They want the hardest work in rock solid, good on-time paying tenants who keeps the property clean. So they they appreciated both the pools that we have we have fixed up. We put the furnitures, and we also put an Amazon parcel lockers installation. A lot of families, a lot of Amazon deliveries. So that was the first statement. Second thing we did, we had a um, cage fight type of sort of thing. It looked pretty cool, but over time, it became an MMA fighting cage, right? So we took it out, and then we made the other statement. We put the signages, new branding, painted all the doors. So if you come before January and after March, you'll see the differences, right? That's the way to say, hey, we're here, right? Let's go do some work. And then we fix the roof. Remember we mentioned we're gonna do the, the most needed CapEx. Some of the roof patches or replacements are needed. We have done one, there are a couple of more coming up. Then the biggest statement that we made when you fix the parking lot, it was just bad. And this is, you know, I mean, you would not want to take your new car with it. I said, that's bad. And then even though we did this and that, everybody's okay. When we made that changes with that new tar, all black and a painted night, it really popped up. So people got the message. By that time, interestingly, uh, those, those non-paying tenants are hanging out outside doing whatever they do. They got the message after this one clearly, uh, uh, clearly that, new guys are here, our new team is here, they're here to stay, they're gonna do the right thing and you gotta pay the tenants on time, you really can't mess around. So interestingly, from the tenant-based perspective, some of the renewal was coming up, but some of the renewal was being stagnant because they saw the changes, but they didn't know. Once that this parking lot went in, a lot of the renewal started to come back and the rest wouldn't come through, we knew it's gonna be a kind of sort of problem, right? And that problem, folks are starting to kind of stack up. Um, the only real picture here is the top right. For the website perspective, everything is showcased, but this is the interior. Uh, by the way, uh, all those reports that you're seeing here, 
this is how we share our stuff with the investor relations, I'm sorry, our investor calls, you know, our quarterly calls. Uh, we got better over time. So every quarter we have our investor uh, relations call. We give you updates, walk you through what worked, what didn't work, and some of the pictures as you kind of go through. So again, uh, so back to the interior, this is what we have done, right? Now let's test what we have done versus where we at. At the end of the day, number will do the talking. So look at the top right, uh, the middle right. So on the YTD, our pro forma said we're supposed to collect a little over half a million dollars. We ended up collecting $441,000. We are short of uh, about $80,000. Two things, one, pro forma is a flat. We take the yearly divided by 12, that's our target. So we everything is start with the budget. Uh, but on a turnaround value of strategies, it goes down first, then it comes back out. So we are at the slope of going down and we came to the very bottom. So that's why the increase, and we still think we're gonna come back out uh, at the very close to the pro forma, if not at par with the pro forma for the next uh, five months that we have. And one thing is came out that our other income has been very strong and ahead of the pro forma. So that utility package and the rubs, we kept it at a at par. So long way. Now, if we take a look sample, what we have seen revenue matters. That means high quality uh, tenants staying there would matter. So the first thing we have done as we made this statement, when uh, this one happened, a lot of the problems were coming out. So we went back and did a big clean swap. As we're doing the clean swap, so let me go back, I'll come back to this slide. Okay, let me go back here. So put everything on a timeline, right? So we, we closed the NASA in you know, January, then exterior upgrade began in March, then revenue improvement, all the other income, we started with that first. Then right around that time as new tenants were coming. We're saying, hey, I got rooms. Let's go get the tenants. We have seen the asset management team wasn't performing. For us, as I was mentioning, we have our own asset management software and our asset managers full-time and asset analyst. They also work with the property management software. So we run it independent. What we start seeing is that the data wasn't coming through on the report. It was missing. And that's the first indication of a bad management company. It's almost like if you want to know how strong in the operations of a house. You, you walk in and you see how organized is the house. It doesn't matter what the house is, right? You know, class A location, class A location. An organized house gives you a feeling of how the house owners will, will treat the rest of the stuff. It's the same thing. Uh, so when we walked in, the report wasn't coming out, right? So it's like, a, hmm, that's a problem because if my report does not come around, that means somebody's not entering the data. If somebody's not entering the data, somebody is not teaching somebody how to enter the data. One. Then two, our financial uh, was not being reconciled on, on time. That's another issue. And then my, you know, my marketing wasn't working the way it is. My tenant, uh, my lease up rate wasn't at par with what we're expecting. So even though the company was big, they had original in place, the local property manager was not at par. So we talked about it. We swapped out the managers. We replaced the, uh, we, we got a different, you know, uh, regional, but again, what we have seen, the structure there wasn't, it just wasn't there. So going in month number five, we as an asset manager decided they need to be out. So we gave them a two months notice. They came back, I said, they understand. In about a month, they, they gotta be out. So we, we went in, brought our option B, which is another property management company from DFW area. Uh, they are not so big. They have about 3000 units or so. And the good part is they also own assets. Uh, in that you know, in DFW area, but they operate in the San Antonio area and Houston area. And we love their operations. We love the health of it. And then we're going back. We decided this is going to be a heavy touch, really close. So we need a middle-sized team where we can talk to the owner and we can talk to the regional and they can influence the work. So we replaced them out. So the new property management company came about three weeks ago. As the new property management company came through us ago, all of our assumption came through, they were right. We found out leases are there. The manager wasn't doing it. They were not collecting checks the right way. We told them no cash, but still cash was being taken. So we went back in. And the point is, as we come in, as asset manager, you got to be always glasses half empty. Uh, so what else is going to go wrong? When that's going to go wrong? When that happens, how do we mitigate that? So that 
the view that we had early on because of the heavy tar. Uh, so we replaced the property management company and we're extremely happy with the performance. And as you know, uh, the Joe, that gentleman is no longer with us. We let him go today because even though he's been in the operation for so long, he did not fit the process that we have put it in. And it's, it, it's, a, it's a trust but validate process. And that's where he fell short. And when you fall short, when push comes in, then you talk and that puts a bad vibe. We took him out and then somebody else new coming in. So on that note, also with a clean house. So we had about 40 units coming up vacant. First thing is we got to have units ready to uh, to sell, right? So the new property management company brought a team from Dallas. We brought a team from uh, Houston. So we are, I think this is the fastest I have seen. We're turning about one and a half unit a day. So within 30 days, we'll have about 40 units ready. And we already have 15 units ready. So property management company is gone. New managers coming in place. All the units are getting ready. And then we are focusing on next month and month after. How do we create that wow factor when someone drives by? So which is the ramp up the marketing and building the community to stabilize in 90 days. And that's where we are executing the exterior CapEx. Bottom left, uh, we have the office. Office can I get a graffiti so you can take Instagram, selfie, some social media stuff. It, it, we have done in two properties, people love it. On the leasing office, we are really beautifying from outside, so when you drive by, you'll see it. Then we have a monument sign. Initial size, what we had, we had increased the size, so it looks bigger now. So when you come back from the Goldman Street, uh, so Goldfield, you'll see uh, the big two fences right here. Look at the top right. Big. Uh, we have a metal fence. We're gonna put some siding on it, put horizon on top of that. So you cannot miss it. So you cannot miss horizon here when you drive by. You're gonna see the office stand out. And Ritman is really, you know, high volume cars. Here's gonna be horizon. Here's gonna be horizon. Here's a leasing sign, and that is happening now as we speak. So. 30 days out from the exterior perspective, everybody would know that new management company in place because from the outside perspective, we created a feel. Also extra traffic will go away because they know they have a wall now. It's been, it's, it's been a while. Interior perspective, we got the two new pools and the new look and feel. So they get the message. We got a website, we're revamping it and we're going around doing some other marketing and we brought in a specialty marketing company. We have used them twice where when the occupancy was down high, uh, we can do a certain amount. We need extra uh, firepower. So we bring in a specialty marketing company to give them to increase the velocity of the tenant. So that's where we at right now, almost 40 units uh, empty, 15 units on hand. Uh, as a third party uh, marketing company is with us. We are full on marketing. The CapEx should go, um, we should be able to fully execute in end of this month. And then we're expecting to stabilize it in 90 days. It's a lot, but it's fun. And as you see it, it's a, it, 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 it really shows up. The whole point is that, you know, but look, you can make it as simple as you can uh, and run an asset on Excel. Or is it different than you have to go through the exercise of it? And most of the exercise is depends how how many units you have done before. Because going back, Joseph, the gentleman who went eight people crew from here to here, you know, San Antonio, we have been working with him for three years. Right? One phone call, he's in a week and a half. And those are the type of relationship. The roof we needed, Sanjay has been with the roofer for like ever, like a decade. One phone call, he got his van, go replace the roof at a very good price. That's the strength of having a strong team in place. And that's what you expect as a LP team. And also as a GP, that's what you wanna build. Otherwise you're gonna learn, but learning has a price to it. It's the time value of money and also the, uh, the tickets, the work order that you're gonna get. Uh, so all in all, we're really excited about the horizon. And this is, and on this is we are following the timeline. There's some slippage, but we got back in and we are very proactive about it. And uh, we have, going back, we had we raised $4 million. We have about another $1.5 million gap to finish it, to open that up. Uh, so the thing that I, I mentioned to all the LPs is, look, if you invest in this project today, your closing risk is gone, your takeover risk is gone, your capex risk is almost finished because all the numbers came out to be almost similar. We, all, we went over budget in one spot. And the LP perspective, look, all investments, 
this is a good risk adjuster return as you kind of get in. Uh, that was it for today.